Mother Nature never fails to surprise us with the craziest natural phenomena. The Earth has seen many things since the dinosaurs disappeared till now. There are some wonders of nature that one must see at least once before they say goodbye to this amazing planet. From once-in-a-century incidents to century-old mind-blowing places, here are the bizarre natural phenomena in the world that you must see to believe. Who doesn't love crabs? Well, the Cubans living near Cuba's Bay of Pigs, that's who. There's a reason why the seafood-loving Cubans don't like these land crabs. Every year, Cuba witnesses one of the most bizarre natural phenomena. Once every year, millions of small reddish land crabs come out of the moist forest around the Bay of Pigs and make their way into the nearby sea to breed. The journey isn't an easy one. The distance can be up to six miles and many obstacles along the way such as roads, curbs, and even coastal resort swimming pools. It may take the little crawlers days to reach the ocean. On a sunny day, the crabs must find a shade in their journey and they'll get dehydrated and pass away. During the season, the roads around the sea and forest area get covered with smelly smashed crab bits because a huge amount of them get crushed under the cars while crossing the roads. Even though the car owners don't exactly love changing their shredded tires due to sharp crab shells, the birds and other hungry mammals love them. This isn't a great meal idea for humans, though. These crabs contain harmful toxins. The Cuban Authority tries to save the crabs by closing some roads and sidewalks and create crab crossings. But as it turns out, it doesn't really help the situation that much. One thing that it does help in is increasing the tourist attention. If you also plan to see this journey, make sure you protect yourself from the crab bits. The Earth holds many secrets buried underneath blazing hot secrets. When a Soviet drilling rig accidentally punched into a massive underground natural gas cavern in 1971, it opened the gates to poisonous methane gas leaking into the atmosphere. The hole was so big that the whole drilling rig fell into it. Geologists back then were trying to find a way to stop the methane from doing much damage. That's when they started to set the crater on fire, believing it'll burn for a few weeks maximum and all the gas will be used up. They couldn't be more wrong. Fast forward 50 years, the crate is still burning. This burning crate is one of the top tourist attractions of Turkmenistan. In 2018, the Amo Hazar automobile rally even made an overnight stop at the cavern. The authorities have been trying to put the fire out ever since it's been ablaze. Recently, a commission was tasked to find a solution for extinguishing a burning gas crater in Darvaza in January 2022. The commission is hoping to either put the fire away completely or at least find a less harmful way for the crater to burn. Lightning is the go-to feature in horror and suspense movies, and no other place is more perfect for this than Lake Maracibo in Venezuela. The country witnesses this crazy natural phenomena every year over the mouth of the Catatumbo River. The lightning occurs from a mass of storm clouds at an altitude of more than one kilometer. The lightning frequency is from 16 to 40 times per minute, but it changes every year. What's special about this lightning is the intensity of light it emits. When water droplets of humid air collide with ice crystals from the cold air, it produces static charges that build up with time. When the charges release, it creates a zigzag of electrical energy strong enough to light 100 million bulbs. Just 10 minutes of this continuous lightning is enough to illuminate all of South America. To say it's a magical experience would be an understatement. Who doesn't love a calm evening at the beach? And if it's by the sea of glittering water, it's hard to ever leave that place. That glittering water we're talking about is actually bioluminescent tides that shine in the dark at Mosquito Bay, Puerto Rico. This phosphorescence is due to the algae suspended in the water that glows whenever the water is moved. When the tides come or a boat passes by jostling the water, it looks like there are millions of stars swimming in the sea. Some others that are responsible for this incredible natural phenomenon are the bioluminescent organisms like firefly skid and ostacod crustaceans. In a world full of artificial LED lights, this truly is something to enjoy. If you want to enjoy interesting videos on mysterious and unusual topics, you've found just the channel. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button so you never miss any of our videos. If you look at the pictures of the Nambid Desert, you'll instantly notice these weird round patterns on the sand. 
this is one of Mother Nature's most debated and unexplained natural phenomena. The researchers have been fiercely debating the reason behind this for many years. Some researchers argue that the patterns known as fairy circles are made by termites under the soil to clear vegetation in the area surrounding their nests. They do it to make the soil porous, which can then hold much more rainwater. The pores on the soil turn into tiny permanent reservoirs of rainwater 50 centimeters below the surface. This keeps the termites alive and preserves the ecosystem. The other argument is that the plants are responsible for the circular patterns on the soil. The plants help the termites close to them to collect water by providing shade, but they take in water from the soil further away from them with long roots. Both these theories have merits, but the water competition theory explains these bizarre natural moments more precisely than the previous one. But none of these theories have been proven yet. Water has mighty power and the ability to crush everything in its way. One prime example of that is Pororoca, a tidal bore that happens at the connection of the Amazon River and the Atlantic Ocean. The tidal bore is a tidal phenomenon in which the leading edge of the incoming tide forms a wave of water that travels up a river or narrow bay, reversing the direction of the river or bay's current. This can sometimes be almost 4 meters high and travels at the speed of 800 kilometers. The ocean tide stays at its highest during a new or full moon. That's when water flows from the Atlantic into the Amazon River, reversing its usual flow of water, creating the tidal bore. And a water bulge speeds upstream with great strength. The level of destruction the Pororoca tidal bore can cause is probably the reason behind its name. Some think the name came from the indigenous Tupi language, which means great roar. Others think the name came from the Portuguese term porak porak, which is used to express the act of destroying everything. I think both names fit the title bore perfectly. What do you think? Do you have any better names for it? Let us know in the comments below. The bright color of Lake Natron invites everyone to jump into it, but hold your horses. Just because something looks nice doesn't mean it's safe. This bright pink lake has a pH of 10.5 and is so caustic it can burn the skin and eyes of most animals that aren't adapted to this water. This natural phenomenon occurred due to sodium carbonate and other minerals flowing into the lake from the surrounding mountains. The media went crazy over the lake's mysterious pink water and many stories started to float on the internet, the most popular being animals turning into rocks as soon as they touched the water. In fact, the lake is a sustainable ecosystem of salt marshes, freshwater wetlands, flamingos, and other wetland birds, tilapia, and the best popular food for the pink flamingos, the algae. That said, due to the water's high alkalinity, it's not suitable for humans to swim in it or drink. The high soda and salt content of the lake can melt the ink of a Kodak film box in seconds. Some things are better appreciated from afar. Remember the days when we used to look at the clouds and try to figure out what the cloud resembles? Well, these lenticular clouds could have definitely made us think of a lens or saucer. These are stationary clouds formed mostly in the troposphere in parallel alignment to the wind direction. They are most commonly seen near mountaintops. Sometimes nacreous clouds that form in the lower stratosphere can look like lenticular ones due to natural and man-made reasons. Natural reasons are hills and mountains, and man-made reasons are artificial structures like skyscrapers. All of these disturb the natural airflow into eddies, meaning areas of turbulence influenced by these obstructions. When moist air flows over larger eddies, they are usually caused by the mountains. Large-scale standing waves get created on the leeward side of the mountain. Then, when the temperature at the top drops below the local dew point, the air gets condensed, forming the lenticular clouds. If someone suddenly looks at the blood falls located in Antarctica's McMurdo Dry Valleys, it'll seem as if the Earth is bleeding. The reason behind this unusual fall that looks like bloodbath has been at a point of interest for many researchers. The water falls down from Taylor Glacier and then the liquid bubbles up from fissures in the glacier surface. Initially, the reason for this ruddy water was thought to be some kind of red algae, but then a study in the Journal of Glaciology discovered that there's a complex network of subglacial rivers and a subglacial lake under the glacier that is brine high in iron that gives the water its blood-red look. 
The researchers used radar to scan the layers of ice from where the water pours to figure out the mystery behind this blood fall. The mean temperature of the fall is 1.4 degrees Fahrenheit at which the water shouldn't be flowing. But the high density of iron in the water makes it possible to flow at a temperature where normal water would freeze. How would you feel if you saw a random stone in your backyard moving by itself? Not very thrilled, that's for sure. This, however, is a regular occurrence in the Death Valley National Park. Here, the stones apparently move horizontally without any gravitational force. This truly is one of nature's strangest phenomena. The park is actually a desert landscape located on the border of California and Nevada, surrounded by mountains. These rocks are also known as sailing stones, which are made of dolomite and cyanite. These are also the materials the mountains around the landscape are made of. These stones are actually part of the mountains that tumble down due to erosion and drop to the dry desert below them. That's when things start to get interesting. Instead of staying where they initially fell, the stones somehow move places around the valley. Even though no one has seen them actually move, the very obvious trail they leave behind leaves very little to the imagination. These rocks of racetrack playa periodically change their location and it's very easy to record their horizontal movement by watching the trail. Even to this day, scientists and geologists aren't exactly sure why and how the stones move around by themselves. Many believe something supernatural is behind this. What do you think might be the reason? Share with us in the comments below. When we approach a beach, it's a pretty obvious place that's clear as day to the common eye. But when it comes to Playa del Amor, or the hidden beach, you're bound to get lost without knowing exactly the way to get to it. Just as the name suggests, this is a hidden beach or a wide sandy cavern with blue waters of the Pacific rushing in that's located about 22 nautical miles west of Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, at the mouth of Banderas Bay. The place looks like it's straight out of a fantasy movie. The beach is practically invisible from the outside and the only way to get to it is through a long water tunnel that links the beach to the Pacific Ocean. The cavern is relatively small and there's only six feet of space above the water level. To get to the beach, tourists usually just swim or, for a more fun experience, use a kayak to reach it. The island is still uninhabited. However, because of its unique appearance, many tourists flock to the destination to enjoy the diverse marine wildlife and the unique tropical Eden of Playa del Amor. So if you feel like hiding from the world where no one can see you, you found just the place. At the same time, while you're hiding, Remember the brightly colored Lake Natron we just talked about? Well, unlike that one, this completely bubblegum pink lake, Hillier, is actually safe to swim in. This lake in Australia looks like a giant pond of strawberry milkshake from afar. Even though the exact reason behind the colorful water is unknown, many scientists believe it's due to specific species of microalgae in the water. These tiny little microorganisms love salt and use other parts of the visible light spectrum except in orange-red frequencies for photosynthesis. Through the process, they produce carotenoid pigments and beta-carotene that give the lake its famous bubblegum pink color. But hold your horses before rushing to jump into this pink heaven. It's currently a protected nature reserve that's only open for visitors under special circumstances. In any case, it's actually best to view it from the air to perfectly catch the beauty of the lake. Despite its bubblegum pink appearance, the water is actually clear and won't cause any harm to your skin if you do manage to swim in it. If you thought lights can only hit the ground from the sky by lightning, prepare to be surprised. This unusual natural phenomenon takes place in the Arctic and some places in the US and Canada where it looks as if there are light pillars coming from the sky from an extraterrestrial spacecraft. The view that the light pillars create is otherworldly, to say the least. This strange yet beautiful illusion takes place where it's extremely cold. The cold turns the moisture in the air into crystals that slowly falls towards the ground. When the street lights around the place hit the crystals, it results in these beautiful thin and tall light pillars. These light pillars can also be an indication of what's around them. For instance, if the pillars are multicolored, that means they are getting created by artificial lighting and the pillars are just taking on the predominant color of the light source. This in turn indicates that there's likely to be a city nearby. The light pillars are also proof that crystals are suspended high in the atmosphere. 
What color is ice? That's a tricky question, and the answer is that ice takes on the color of water they are made of. So what does the turquoise ice signify? That actually means that the ice is formed by the clearest water possible. We're talking about Lake Baikal in Russia. It's a massive lake that's actually the source of many rivers in the surrounding countries, including Southeast Asia. The lake is located more than 4,000 feet under sea level. For the most part of the year, it looks like a massive yet ordinary lake. In winter, however, it's a different story. The water temperature of Lake Baikal can drop down to minus 36 degrees Fahrenheit. That's when the ice starts to form on the surface. The water of the lake is so clear that it's possible to see up to 130 feet below the water surface. Because of this crystal clear water, the ice that it forms has a turquoise hue when the sunlight hits it. The layer of the beautiful turquoise ice can be up to 2 meters thick because of its frigid temperature of the lake. Waterfalls usually fall in an uninterrupted pattern that's visible to the common eye. The Devil's Kettle Falls in Minnesota's Judge Magny State Park defies that norm, and you're about to know why. The waterfall or the river suddenly splits in the middle and then continues to flow down. One section is on slightly the right and the other is slightly on the left. The original stream on the left suddenly vanishes into a hole, and from there, another stream comes out shifting to the left. The pothole that the initial stream vanishes into is called the Devil's Kettle. The pothole has this unusual name because it's still unexplained, where the stream that goes into the hole vanishes. Researchers have been scratching their heads over this for years, and they've tried everything from throwing dyes and logs to many other things into holes, but nothing ever re-emerges. Experts believe the stream might fall into the Lake Superior through underground passages, but still just another guess till now. Whatever goes into the hole doesn't come out. If you have a fear of falling, then this place is certainly not for you. If you do want to see the Devil's Kettle yourself, finding it isn't that difficult. It'll take you about one mile of hiking to reach it, and on your way, you'll pass the Upper Falls. But just be careful, what goes in the Devil's Kettle doesn't come out. Climate change is causing some serious problems to our planet, and the permafrost explosions are the perfect examples of it. Recently, there have been explosions happening all across the icy landscape of Siberia, and that has created many massive and random craters all across the country. At first, they were thought to be some mysterious natural phenomena, but soon after the researchers managed to figure out the reason behind these explosions, the permanently frozen land or permafrost, as you can guess, should be in freezing condition at all times. Due to global warming, the frozen layers of Siberia started to melt and with it started to release greenhouse gases, destabilizing the surface. When the ice layer starts to melt, it becomes too weak to sustain the pressure of the methane gas buildup underneath the surface, which then results in the massive explosions that we're seeing. These blasts are not only causing harm to the climate, but also putting the lives of every living creature of Siberia in threat. Since the researchers started studying this, they came up with the concept of intrapermafrost, which indicates a pool of weakened permafrost. Unless we start taking care of our environment, the destruction that climate change will bring will be unimaginable, and the permafrost explosions are just the beginning of it. When looking from above, the spots in Canada look like huge gemstones are laid on the ground. This is actually a saline and doric alkali lake located northwest of Ozoyuz in British Columbia, Canada. The spots are formed on the lake when most of the water evaporates during the summer. The water is enriched with various minerals such as high intensity of magnesium sulfate, calcium, and eight other mineral sulfates in high concentration and a little bit of silver and titanium. What color the spots will be largely depend on the mineral composition and the precipitation of each season. Magnesium sulfate crystallizes easily during the summer and plays a vital role in the color of the spots. If you look closely, you'll notice something white in between the colorful spots. Those are the remaining minerals of the lake, and they make perfect natural walkways around the spots. The lake is surrounded by a fence put up by the Canadian government to protect it. Travelers still stop by to catch a glimpse of the colorful lake. If you played the popular video game Genshin Impact, you'll notice some frost flowers here and there inside the game. These flowers are the real-life version of those frost flowers. These frost flowers grow on the sea ice and have a high concentration of salinity and other seawater chemicals. 
These icy flowers usually grow in patches of 3 to 4 centimeters in diameter. Apart from looking beautiful, these ice crystals actually serve another important purpose. Because of their high surface area, these are efficient releasers of the sea chemicals into the atmosphere. These frost flowers have two to three times greater bromide ion concentration than the seawater. These flowers are pretty common on earth poles and, according to Professor Jody Deming, we'll see more and more of these as the poles warm up. Because then, there will be even more open seas that turn into thin ice in the winter forming the flowers. No, we're not talking about Disney's Sleeping Beauty Princess Aurora here. We're talking about the Northern Lights or the Aurora Borealis, the beautiful dancing lights. But behind these beautiful magnificent lights, there is actually a not-so-beautiful reason. This natural phenomena has been caught on camera and filmed for millennia. The scientific scary fact behind this dance of lights is that the energized particles from the sun slam into Earth's upper atmosphere at speeds of up to 45 million miles per hour, and that creates these lights. Thankfully, our Earth's magnetic field protects us from the angry sun particles, and since there are two magnetic poles, these lights are created on both poles. Just like the northern lights, there are the southern lights as well. The most amazing fact about this is that the aurora is completely dependent on the chemical composition of Earth's atmosphere. When the atmosphere shifts, the light shift with it. The breathtaking atmospheric phenomenon is something that everyone must have on their travel bucket list. The aurora borealis is most commonly seen in Norway. Fairweather water spouts are seriously scary to look at, however, you should know that they're not as dangerous as they seem. These dense clouds form when there is a lot of humidity in the air and the weather is significantly warm. Fair weather water spouts are most commonly seen in tropical and subtropical waters such as the Florida Keys, the islands of Greece, and off the east coast of Australia. These clouds are static and even though they are dangerous themselves, they are surely the indication of a storm such as a thunderstorm. They are a threat not only to swimmers and boaters, but also to aircraft such as helicopters. Oftentimes, the helicopters that fly close to the water spouts can have up to 100 meters in diameter lose their way because of the dense cloud and strong winds. These clouds usually stay for about an hour before starting to clear up. Speaking of weird clouds, let's talk about the Godzilla clouds. Yes, these are actual clouds that are shaped somewhat like a monster from the famous movie. Sometimes some clouds are so unusually shaped that they amaze us. This little masterpiece was captured by someone when he or she was traveling in a ferry boat from Macton Island to Cebu City and decided to post it on YouTube. Clouds are made of tiny little water droplets that can float in the air. Once they reach high up in the sky, because of the cold they freeze and form these weird shapes that are visible to us. Sometimes the shapes are just simple and ordinary, and sometimes they are really unique such as this one. The clouds that we see normally have no internal convective phenomena that can give them any unique shape. Some clouds that have it end up in videos such as this one. Nature has some of the most terrifying yet intriguing creations that amaze and disgust us at the same time. The cicadas are such a creation of Mother Nature. They are a kind of insect also known as Brood X, and they are the biggest of the 15 known periodical cicada broods. Cicadas are almost an inch long, but the reason that they aren't the most favorite of many isn't their size, but their shrill sounds and the way they move. They come in large groups in swaths of Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Maryland, Washington, D.C., and beyond. Many still mistake the cicadas for locusts, which is not only a completely different insect, but also known for their crop-devouring tendency that's completely different from the nature of the cicadas. When they come in huge groups, it feels as if it's a dangerous natural phenomena that's caused because of the notorious global warming. In reality, it's not dangerous at all. In fact, it's a privilege to witness this phenomena firsthand. Why? Because these nifty little creatures have been around for about 5 million years. They've witnessed humans evolving through centuries and bear the proof of it. Clouds can sometimes look bizarre and sometimes incredible, but in this case it's both. This fireball cloud emerged in the sky over the Portuguese island of Madeira. This incredible piece of art was captured by Rogerio Pacheo, a photographer and weather blogger, and he came up with the name of the cloud a fireball. The question that many have is why are there dark patches on the cloud, and why is one end of the cloud so much lighter than the other? The answer to that is two different altitudes. 
When clouds from two different layers in the sky mix together, they differ in color all the time. But we don't realize that because it's usually different shades of gray and our eyes can't distinguish between the two. Here, the sunlight is hitting the cluster of clouds just at the right moment, and that's what's making the shade difference so much more pronounced. The darker cloud on the top is an alto stratus cloud that forms at altitudes between 2400 and 6100 meters. There's nothing that special about the cloud from a structural point of view, but the timing is impeccable, and that's what's made it so different and intriguing. Are you afraid of tornadoes? If so, brace yourself for this one. Instead of hitting you with cold, devastating wind, it'll hit you with a flaming hot fire. Meet Firenado, a whirlwind induced by fire that oftentimes has ash in it. These first start as a whirl of wind that becomes more and more visible as smoke adds to it. These whirlwinds are usually created when there's a sudden and intense rise of heat in the air and turbulent wind conditions. Then these whirling eddies of air quickly contract into a tornado-like vortex that starts taking in debris and combustible gases, and soon after, they become the Firenado. The Firenado has a burning core and a rotating pocket of air almost the same as a regular tornado just with the fire. These Firenados are commonly seen when there's a wildfire and the damage that they cause is unimaginable. These can uproot trees that are 15 meters tall. These can also create new fires and spread the fire way beyond the origin because of the high speed and flaming properties. Long story short, if you see one of these coming at you, run as fast and as far as possible. Remember that fair weather water spout that we talked about a while ago? Well, consider the shelf cloud its distant cousin. This dense and dark formation of cloud looks very intimidating and it has been scaring people that aren't fully about what this is for years. I mean, can you blame them? Just look how scary this thing looks, almost resembling a tornado. In reality, these are low-hanging, well-defined wedge-shaped clouds that are usually on the leading edge of a gust front in a thunderstorm. These clouds are most commonly seen in summer and springtime when most thunderstorms happen. Despite their ominous look, the shelf clouds aren't that dangerous. That said, even though they aren't harmful themselves, they do indicate something quite dangerous such as intense thunderstorms called squall lines or bow echoes that create strong winds when they hit. Snow is always white, right? Wrong! Snow can also be orange. This is a rare phenomenon that happens almost once a year in Russia. But this might be spreading because the orange snow has begun in Bulgaria, Romania, and Ukraine recently. The most popular place for this orange snow is the city of Sochi in Russia that almost looks like a surface on Mars. It's unbelievable until you see it for yourself. So what makes the snow this weird orange shade? The answer is the sand from the Sahara Desert. The wind carries the sand from the desert through North Africa to Eastern Europe and UK. To be more precise, the sandstorm carries the sand. The storm was so strong that it went from North Africa to Greece before heading to Eastern Europe. The most interesting part is that the storm could even be seen from NASA's Terra satellite. When sand mixes with the storm and rain, it turns the snow into different shades of red and orange. But don't go running to mix sand with snow in your backyard now. It doesn't work like that, and you'll just end up with a huge pile of wet dirt. We know some flies are attracted to lights, but what about cars? Well, as it turns out, cars too are a place of choice for the mayflies to attack. This weird incident happened in Ohio, USA, and the locals weren't happy about it. The clip shows a swarm of mayflies moving out of Lake Erie and into the houses and cars of the poor people nearby. Imagine how scary it is to have a ginormous swarm of insects coming right at you, for better or for worse, these flies only live for about five days as adults. Before that, they live for two years attached to submerged rocks or at the bottom of Lake Erie as wigglers. At that stage, they aren't as disturbing and play a vital role in maintaining the food chain of the freshwater ecosystems. They consume the algae and other aquatic plants and store that energy in themselves, which then makes it accessible to higher consumers up the chain. But the trouble starts when they get their wings and start swarming out of the lakes. China is not only rich and colorful in culture, but they also have colorful lands. Danixia landforms in China look as if God took a paintbrush and decided to do some painting and add some color to the earth. At first glance, it'll seem as if you're hallucinating. 
it's really hard to believe that this is actually a mountain formation. It just looks like a huge rainbow on the ground. The colors are due to the several layers of different minerals. In other words, several colorful and bright sandstones and minerals have been pressed together for 24 years to form these colorful and extremely gorgeous mountains. They look like flowing valleys as they've been exposed to rain and wind for thousands of years. If you want a pop of color in your travel life, you've found just the place. Picture this, you're at your home watching the weather report in peace when they suddenly say it's rained fish from the sky. It may seem supernatural to some, but in reality it's actually pretty common. This strange natural phenomenon occurs when a tornado hits the ocean. That causes a severe storm of water, and with the water fishes and other sea creatures like snakes, frogs, turtles, and crabs that were on the water surface or nearby the sea, also they get drawn into a strong wind. When the wind hits the water, it gradually pulls the little things like the fish up into the sky. These creatures fly with the tornado as long as the wind is strong. As the wind starts to slow down, that force that was holding them up also goes down. As a result, they fall down from the sky with rainwater. To the eyes of the person that doesn't know about the whole phenomenon, it'll seem like fish and other sea creatures are falling from the sky out of the blue. Bill Evans's meteorological book, It's Raining Fish and Spiders and Sometimes Snakes, claims that these types of incidents happen around 40 times in the world every year. This is no doubt one of nature's creepiest incidents. What's the natural and cheap alternative to knives? Some would say ice penitents. These are long, thin, and sharp blades of hardened snow or ice. These natural knives are in close proximity to each other and point toward the direction of the sun. According to Louis Labautry, they generally form in places with high altitudes and most importantly in places where the dew point remains below freezing. That combined with dry air sublimates the snow. Once the ablation is started, the surface geometry of the evolving penitent produces a positive feedback mechanism and traps the radiation by multiple reflections between the walls. The highest penitents are believed to be on a satellite of Jupiter, Europa, that go up 15 meters high. So, which of these surprised you the most? Have you ever seen any of these in your real life? Do let us know in the comments below. Like always, if you enjoyed it, be sure to give us a big thumbs up and leave us some love in the comments section. To keep up to date with all our awesome videos, be sure to hit subscribe and turn your notifications on so you never miss a thing. Until next time, do take care of yourself.